You're listening to the Champ Off-Road Podcast, presented by Amswell. Hey yo, it's the Champ Off-Road Podcast, presented by Amsoil, hosted by yours truly, Haley Shanley and Matt Skubik. You know what I think you should do? I think you should head on over to amsoil.com, spend $50 or more, enter promo code FREESHIPSNOWX, and that is going to get you free shipping. Thank you to Amsoil for making this podcast possible. Now joining us today is ProMod side-by-side wheelman, Scotty Lawrence. Scotty, how have you been? I've been doing great. We've been super busy, but doing great. Now, during the short course off season here in the Midwest, you've been staying busy doing some ice racing, I see. How has that been? Yeah, ice racing is a little different. It's, uh, it's very fun. It's challenging. Um, it's just so different than being on the dirt. Um, there's lots of traction, but you know, it's not something that I do a whole lot of. So it's probably the most difficult type of racing in the side by side I've ever done just because of it, you know, have had much experience doing it. But, um, you know, I raced two ice races this year. One was the side by side sports race. Um, I ended up getting a fifth there after I had a pony podium spot secured and I made a couple mistakes and then I went up to the Iceman 500 and, uh, tried my hand at that and was going pretty good. Uh, we were running fast lap times and then we, uh, ended up having a few issues the car just wasn't really quite set up right but we learned a lot and you know that that's a lot of what it's about so we're gonna maybe try to go back next year and try it again we'll see what happens aside from the obvious the tire setup like how different is the car setup for dirt versus ice i would say suspension's pretty similar um the thing about the ice that a lot of people may not expect is that there is a lot of traction. So you can change that a little bit with how many studs you run and how far you space them apart and things like that. Um, but probably I'd say it's probably about 90% similar to the dirt, but the tires are the, the biggest thing, you know, they, they weigh a lot more. So the car might feel a little bit slower. Uh, the braking's a little bit, slower maybe just because you got more weight rotating weight that you're slowing down but it's it's similar but it's different too because it's cold for one you know in the summertime you're a lot of times sweating and fighting the heat and that type of thing you don't have that issue on the ice which is kind of nice but as far as the car goes it's pretty similar we've matter of fact we race the same car same shocks uh just switch the the tires out I don't know how the 500 was, but I was at Eagle River for the World Championship Snowmobile Derby, and throughout the weekend, we saw every kind of wintry condition. It was so cold, and then the next day, we had some sunshine and some melting ice. How intense was that for you? Because you guys don't typically run a windshield. Like, what was that like? It was pretty intense, but about the windshield, that's where I messed up. You see, I, I was thinking, you know what? I'll put this windshield on. It'll block some air, but what ended up happening was the day that we actually raced, it kind of warmed up and the top of the ice started melting and that windshield was just nothing but solid slush and ice. And, uh, I've heard from a few people that on the start of that particular race, it looked like just a water just slinging everywhere, ice slinging everywhere. I mean, the pro mods can really kick up quite a bit. And from the start of that race, I had visibility issues and, and, um, that, that was a mistake that I made was leaving that windshield on where everybody else, I think, for the most part, took it off. So I should have took it off, but I didn't. So You're being pretty new, like in the whole UTV side-by-side market and the whole racing side of it. You made your race debut in 2018. What can you take from what you did learn on the ice to maybe this summer with Championship Off-Road on the dirt? Um. I would say the biggest thing that I learned from, from that one race was um, once you get into a position where, um, you know, you've secured a podium spot, you know, it's not even halfway through the race, that's when it's time to kind of settle down and try to just focus on running good lines, trying to maybe reel the guy in, in front of you, or uh, maybe even if you can get a little gap on the guy behind you, maybe trying something a little different to see, you know, can I gain a quarter or a half a second here? Um, but 
I think that's the biggest thing is from starting to where I am now is being comfortable in the car and just being able to focus more on the racing instead of just like being having tunnel vision and just trying to go fast. So I think that's what separates a lot of the the top guys from guys that are new is that, um, you know, at first the speeds uh, are very intimidating and you get this tunnel vision where you're just looking forward and you, it's hard to focus on really trying to get faster. You're just trying to stay under control. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to work on this year is um, trying to be a little smoother and run in different lines and maybe experimenting um, to where I won't lose positions, you know, that type of thing. Now, is that something you can practice or is that something that just comes from time, you know, being behind the wheel? Because I know you're a teammate with reigning pro mod champion Kyle Cheney and you're actually good friends with him. So when you guys go and practice, is this something you you can learn and also practice on, or is this something you can only learn while you're racing? I think it's something that you can really only learn while you're racing. Um, first of all, it's really hard to simulate racing situations in practice, and and actually... I really don't get to practice hardly ever except for at the races, you know, when we have time to get out on the track, I've got a half mile short course track at my house, but you know, between it either raining all the time, like it has been here in Ohio for the past month and it being a complete mud, you know, track, or if it stops raining for two days, it turns to complete dust. And you know, that doesn't make the neighbors very happy. So, (laughs) um, it's kind of hard. It's challenging to get practice, uh, this year. That's something that we're going to do is we're going to try to get to some of these tracks and actually do, you know, real practice and testing to see if we can't get these cars and ourselves a little faster. Now, be it ice or dirt, your involvement in the sport goes beyond the racing side. So for those who don't know, can you tell us what do you do for a living? So since about 2015, I've owned a Can-Am dealership. Um, in Ohio, it's called rival motorsports and it's been a business that I've had since around 2006, but we did pick up the Can-Am franchise in 2015 and we just been building up from there. So, um, you know, that's how I met Kyle was getting the Can-Am dealership. He was already a factory Can-Am driver. So he came in and, you know, we ended up getting along pretty good and I started helping him out with a few things, you know, helping get the trailer wrapped and, and just trying to help out in any way I can. Um, and then 2017, I decided I want to, you know, take a little shot at racing. And then I started getting into a little bit more, but you know, since we have become a can aim dealer, we've been helping out a lot of racers. Um, you know, I used to race ATVs back in my younger days and man, it's expensive to race. So, uh, I, I, and I know how, huge of a deal it is to for someone to come along and say hey you know what can i do to help you if here's 20 percent, here's 30 percent off your parts or here's a a trick or a tip that you can take and try to make yourself better and that's what we've been trying to do for a lot of guys and i think it shows because um man it seems like when i look around i see a lot of people that are running the rival motorsports logo and, and that makes me extremely happy because i really love racing and um i just want to keep seeing the sport grow that's awesome. And that's so cool that you give back to the sport in that way. And I want to ask you, it seems like right now, as stuff is still closed down for the most part, people want to get outside, they want to be active, spend time with their families. Just how much has this pandemic had an effect on the business? Well, since 2015, we've been growing every year. Mm-hmm. And in 2019, we had a really good summer. I mean, we were almost twice as busy for the whole year. So we've been growing quite a bit, but April of this year, you know, just last month, we were actually more than twice as busy as our previous busiest month. Um, It's, I don't know if it was, you know, everybody's got $1,200 down or, you know, the bank started just saying everybody's approved or what happened, but it seemed like every person that put in an app was able to buy, uh, K&M came out with some 0% financing, which the people that 
were waiting on that for a while. You know, they, they jumped all over that. So the pandemic, I, as far as business goes, it's kind of like what pandemic, you know? So, um, and we're still busy. We've been busy this month as well. So it's, it's been good for us. And I'm glad to see people investing in something that they're going to be able to use to make memories with their family, to go out and have fun. And, um, it, it, like I said, I love the whole power sports industry and to see people getting into it like they have been in the, in the past few months has been great. You know, aside from the pandemic, at one point you were awarded National Can-Am Dealership of the Year. Can you talk about what that meant to not only the business, but to you? Yeah, it's uh, that was kind of a surprise, to be honest with you. Um I knew we were having a good year, and we, when we went to the the dealer show, um, they kind of they kind of let me know that hey, you know, you're going to be the 2019 regional dealer of the year, which we had already been the district dealer of the year for three years. And I thought, man, that's amazing because I think there's four regions in the United States or something. I was like, man, for us to to be that. Um, successful and to be recognized is just huge and and we're just can-am dealer we only sell atvs and side-by-sides from can-am so we don't do the jet skis you know no sea do ski do none of that so well, i think one thing that helps us get these awards is that we really focus on the off-road the can-am off-road um, product and uh, you know one thing that i'm not afraid to tell people and i don't think it's being prideful is that we know Can-Am off-road product, and we do it better than anybody else, and we focus on that. And then, uh, so we had a little get-together, and they were awarding the regional dealer of the year, and then they said, okay, now for national dealer of the year. And I was just kind of like, what in the world? Like, you know, I thought it was really cool, but then when people started telling me about it and how difficult of a thing that is to attain, like, it started kind of setting in, and I mean, I just started counting my blessings, and I mean, I got a great crew that works for me at rival motorsports and um something that i try to instill in my guys is that if you're going to do something you don't have to be the best in the world or the you know best in the state or whatever but be the best that you can be it, it's really kind of amazed me what we've been able to do in the, in the past five years since the beginning of your off-road racing career has can-am always been your go-to brand i've always really liked can-am i think you know, 10 years ago, Can-Am was kind of known as a higher end type of machine. It was more expensive than a lot of other brands, um, but I really liked it. And whenever they came knocking on my door and asked me if I would consider, you know, taking on a franchise and I was ready. I mean, I was chomping at the bit to do it. So, um, you know, I wasn't really involved with the racing side of it. So as far as racing goes, I guess I hadn't really thought about it as like, that's the dealership that, you know, or the, the brand that I would be on. But once I got the the franchise, I mean, there was no other choice for me. And uh, it's definitely worked out in my favor for sure, I think. Let's talk about 2020. What is the biggest focus for you heading into Crandon? So this year in the, in the Pro Mod side-by-side class, um, I'm building a new car and I'm hoping to have it ready, you know, by the time Crandon rolls around here in two and a half, three weeks or, or we're getting pretty close and I think we'll make it. But, um, I've had some success in the pro mod class. You know, last year I ended up third overall behind Kyle and Rodney and both of those guys have, have won championships in the class before. So, you know, I was uh, pretty stoked to, to, uh, kind of, come up behind them i mean i've learned a lot from watching both of those guys race i would say my goal this year for the pro mod side by side class is uh, i want to get a win under my belt uh, i was able to get a second last year and a third at bark river and i've had lots of fourth place finishes but i just can't quite get that that win yet and um it's a tough thing to do i mean there's a little bit of luck involved there's definitely a lot of preparation and and skill and uh, that's that's my goal this year. And then I want to be consistent enough so that at the end of the year, I'm I'm pushing for that championship. Good deal. Well, that's not all you have in store for 2020. A little bird tells me you have some big news. 
Yeah, about a month ago, um, I started talking with a few guys, and um, I mean, I I can't hardly contain my excitement on this, but it's been tough because we've had this deal worked out for a few weeks. But this year, I'm going to be um, racing in the Pro Four class, and I bought a truck from Scott Douglas, and um, it's I'm so excited. I mean, I don't even. I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's just, I, I want to get in this truck and, and practice. We're actually heading to Crandon next week, I think to, uh, to get in the truck for the first time. So, um, you know, last year, about midway through the year, we bought a truck and, and Kyle jumped in that. And, you know, he said, man, once you get out of that pro four, you're not even going to want to get back in the side by side. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but man, I cannot wait to get in this pro four truck. I actually heard a funny story one time uh, from Kyle. He, we were sitting on the line in Crandon last fall, and they asked him what he was thinking about prior to the start of the Pro Mod World Championship, and he flat out said all he can think about is the Pro 4 World Championship race, and I thought that was pretty, pretty clever and pretty comical that that's all he cared about was that Pro 4. So that shows you what it's like getting behind the wheel of one of those trucks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the Pro 4 truck is just, it's a whole nother level on. I mean, um, you know, the past few years, the numbers have been down in that class a little bit. And that's kind of one of the reasons that I, I pulled the trigger on this deal is because not only do I want to see side-by-sides keep growing, but I mean, the Pro 4 class is, is the top class for all the short course racing. And I think with you know, champ off road coming on board and with their experience on, on running, um, series and, and doing it well, I think this class is going to grow again. And I think it's going to get, get back to where it needs to be and just super exciting. Um, you know, it's, it's what everyone comes to watch and I just, I can't wait to get out there with those guys. I mean, this year, um, it's going to be, a huge learning curve for me. Uh, I feel like I picked things up pretty quick, so I hope to be competitive, but I got a lot to learn. I mean, CJ, Johnny, those guys, they've got it down. And, um, you know, there's, uh, Kyle's going to be racing full time this year in the pro four also. And Jimmy Henderson, another guy from, uh, pro mod UTV class, you know, he's going to be racing full time this year. Uh, so, you know, I think Ross Hoke's coming back. Um, I heard a lot of guys from West Coast are going to be coming too. So uh, I'm going to look at it as a learning year and try to really prepare for the Pro 4 like I do in the side-by-sides, and uh, I'm excited for it. Man, that is exciting news. We are stoked for you. To the listeners tuned in, if you haven't already, go back in the Champ Offroad podcast archives and scroll back to Scott Douglas. We chatted with him just a few weeks ago. You can get some more insights on that truck. But, uh, Scotty, that has to be a confidence booster for you, knowing you just signed on to a truck with such a resume. It's definitely going to be fast. Um, I mean, he, he, uh, he has really good equipment. You know, and that's one thing, too, is, you know, kind of like I touched on earlier, is um, when I do something, I want to do the best that I can do at it. And that may not be the best that there is, but if I can do the best that I'm capable of, then, um, then I'll be happy. And, and part of that is starting out with good equipment. And that's going to be another part of the huge learning curve is learning about the truck, learning the differences, you know, between my side by side, my can am, I know inside and out. I know every bolt. I know, you know, I've had a wrench on every single bolt on that car. So, um, I'm going to dig into this pro four. I'm going to commit to it and having, you know, starting out with some good equipment, is going to give me a huge advantage, I think. So here's here's a random question for you. How many people will you have that will come as a mechanic on your Pro 4 compared to your, your side-by-side? Like, is it two? Is it four? I just want to know what the difference is, you know, on a workload basis. Honestly, I'm not really sure quite yet. Um, it's, uh, you know, when I watch some of these old videos of the Pro 4, races and i i see guys in the pits changing out engines and doing things like that i'm just like man i hope we don't have to do that because we don't have a huge crew right now um we've got we've got our core guys that have always come with us 
for the pro mods for the UTVs. And I think kind of what we're hoping is that, you know, this is the, the third, third year that we'll be in the Can-Ams and they really haven't changed a whole lot. So we know what works with those. And unless something happens, uh, you know, we get in the next uh, rack or you know, we hit the wall, whatever, our side by side shouldn't take a whole lot of effort. Um, so we're hoping to maybe steal a little bit of time from those, but we're not really sure what to expect. Uh, but we do got a lot of guys coming to help us. Uh, Jimbo, Jeb, Jason, we're going to have a couple video guys there. Um, you know, we'll have some friends there helping us as well that are just, you know, keeping the pits clean, just helping out. But, um, I think we'll be able to handle it with the guys that we got. I mean, I'm, I, I'm pretty, uh, optimistic about that. Thanks for listening to the champ off road podcast presented by Amsoil.